tonight is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning L.I. News Team. Good evening. I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. Police in New York are scouring a 10-mile stretch of Ocean Parkway on Long Island's South Shore, where four bodies were discovered this week. Suffolk County Police Commissioner Richard Dormer says there are still no suspects, but he says investigators removed a sport utility vehicle from a nearby home where a missing New Jersey prostitute was last seen in May. He says investigators want to make sure they don't miss any potential clues or additional corpses. And state police dogs trained to locate bodies have been brought in to aid the search at the beach. None of the bodies has been identified. A mid-level New York court has dismissed incumbent state Senator Craig Johnson's challenge to the vote tally showing he lost his seat on Long Island. The appellate division panel says Democrat Johnson is not entitled to a hand recount in the race against Republican Jack Martins. A judge has certified Martins the winner of the 7th Senate District seat by 451 votes out of tens of thousands cast. Johnson said today he's going to appeal to New York's top court, the Court of Appeals. With that Democratic loss, the Senate would switch back to a 32-30 Republican majority in January. The Democrats had been in charge of the chamber for two years following decades of Republican control. A Brooklyn man has been charged in connection with an assault and robbery that happened last year. And police say the arrest was helped by America's Most Wanted. They say it was July a year ago when 45-year-old Sadiq Abdul Wahab of Brooklyn attacked a 56-year-old man in Valley Stream, demanding his jewelry, then punching and kicking him before forcing it off the victim's wrist and then fleeing. This past September, the case was aired on America's Most Wanted, and police say multiple tips came into the tip line, helping in the arrest of Wahab yesterday. A New York baseball team is helping the needy stay warm this winter while treating fans to a free game. As John Santa Maria reports, the Mets have joined with New York Cares for their annual coat drive. It might not be baseball season yet, but Mets fans have a reason to come out and cheer this holiday season. Fans gather at City Field for the fourth annual coat drive sponsored by the team. Volunteers collected gently used men's, women's, and children's coats for New York Cares, and those in attendance say they're glad to take part in a great cause. Whatever we could do to make the make the poor people warmer, or whatever we could do to help, and the Mets are doing it, so it's a worthy worthy thing. You know how much it means to like Mets fans to do something for your community. According to the team, all fans who donate coats will receive a voucher for one pair of tickets to a select Mets game in April. New York Care says they're honored to take part in this event and team up with the New York astounding. Mets. Um, it helps us not only get more coats, but it also helps us put a special focus on this coat drive um, out here in Queens and, um, and gives a great focus to the communities out here and a great venue to come and, and, and donate their coats. I've been dedicating my life uh, to, to a volunteer um, you know, organization such as New York Cares for about two years now, so it really means a lot, especially around the holiday season. The Mets fans are excited about their free tickets but say it's not the main reason why they're here. To give coats to the homeless because I want to help out. And had coats at home and just wanted to, like whatever way we could help out people who need it, that's why I came to do it. Fans also had the opportunity to meet Mets players David Wright, Jason Bay, Ike Davis, and new manager Terry Collins. They help collect coats and say it's the community that should be getting a lot of the thanks. Look how many coats they have. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's going to benefit a ton of people and uh, just happy we'd be a part of it. New York Care says its goal is to collect 70,000 coats this December. In Flushing, John Santa Maria, LI News Tonight. A Ridge woman has been arrested and charged with robbing an Astoria Federal Savings Bank. Police say the woman went into the bank on Middle Country Road yesterday afternoon. 
gave the teller a note demanding cash and threatened violence if she didn't get the money. Police say the teller complied and 43-year-old LaWanda Jackson escaped with the cash. Police responded to the scene and Jackson was arrested in the parking lot of the bank. She's been charged with one count of robbery. A Long Island County has been selected as one of five in the state to take part in a study to determine why black and Hispanic youth make up a disproportionately high percentage of children in the county's juvenile justice system. Zavera Titler reports. Why are these two statistics so different? One represents the percentage of African American and Latino youth in Nassau County. It's 24 percent. The other represents the percentage of those youth that are placed in the county's juvenile justice system, and it's a whopping 78 okay, percent. Culturally, we need to just take a look at what are we doing that there's a disproportionate number. For That's why Karen Garber of the Nassau County Department of Social Services joined with other service professionals recently at Hofstra to figure out why the numbers are so different and how to correct the problem. Dr. Ralph Bayer, director of Casey Family Programs, says national studies indicate that there is no significant difference in rates of abuse and neglect by race. So the question is, why are there more black and Latino children coming into the child welfare system? Dr. Bayer says one of these reasons is due to poverty, but a majority of this problem is because of discrimination and bias when placing these children into these systems. Could be um, prejudice or discrimination, uh, discriminatory policies or practices, uh, and so we have to kind of look at what those reasons are to figure out the strategies that are needed to be put in place to change that dynamic. According to Dr. Baird, one way to decrease the number of children entering foster care is to provide families with necessary resources, such as daycare services. A lot of times, uh, children are removed from families because the mother makes a decision to leave their younger children with maybe an older sibling that might be 12 or 13 years old and people perceive that as an unsafe situation. Nassau County has been selected as one of five counties across the state to take part in a statewide pilot project studying why there is such a disproportionate minority representation in foster care and the juvenile justice system and what can be done to correct it. In Hempstead, Severa Titler, Ally News Tonight. It was an up day on Wall Street today. The Dow finished up 41 and three quarters points. NASDAQ was up 20 points and the S&P was up seven and two thirds points. We'll be back with more news right after this. A knit and talk support group for women with breast cancer meets at Adelphi University School of Social Work in Garden City on the first Monday of each month from 2.30 to 4 p.m. For more information, call 516-877-4314. The American Parkinson's Disease Association has a monthly support group at New York Institute of Technology in Old Westbury on the second Friday of the month at 2 p.m. For more information, call 516-626-6114. The Nassau County Museum of Art presents Family Sunday at the museum in Roslyn Harbor on Sunday afternoons at 1 p.m. For more information, call 516-484-9337. And the North Shore LIJ Health System offers a weekly support group for stroke survivors and caregivers at Plainview Hospital on the fourth Thursday of the month from 2 till 3 p.m. For more information, call 516-719-2411. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, send it to Tonight at nyit.edu. Press play to start your future. Learn the industry. Use the technology. Become an expert in television reporting, journalism, radio, digital film, public relations and advertising, television production, digital graphics, a beautiful state-of-the-art campus. A road to the job you've always wanted in the media capital of the world. 
Communication Arts at NYIT. When can you start? Some stories around the world today. A judge in the UK has granted bail to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, who will be freed from a British jail. The court rejected prosecutors' argument that Assange should stay in prison. Assange has been in prison a little over a week after surrendering to British police over a Swedish sex crimes warrant. He denies wrongdoing, but is refusing to surrender to Sweden's request to extradite him for questioning. Last month, WikiLeaks angered U.S. officials by beginning to publish a quarter of a million secret U.S. diplomatic cables. A 400-year-old French skull, researchers believe, is the head of celebrated King Henry IV, was hidden for decades in the attic of a now-retired public servant and has now been donated to one of the king's descendants. The head disappeared during the French Revolution in 1793, but much of its journey is still a mystery. A TV production company says it followed leads to track down the mummified skull in the attic of an 84-year-old retired tax collector back in January. French scientists revealed this week that nine months of tests on the skull led them to believe that it was Henry IV's. And Abu Dhabi is often known for its wealth and opulence, and apparently that also extends to its holiday decorations. The latest extravagance is an $11 million towering Christmas tree at the Emirates Palace Hotel. It's described as 43 feet high, adorned with 131 ornaments that include gold and precious stones. Christmas spirit isn't rare in the officially Muslim United Arab Emirates with its huge foreign population and malls full of carolers and Santas. But some local officials worry about threats to Gulf culture from all that Western influence. The annual lighting of the Big Duck is scheduled for tonight in Flanders. The lighting ceremony was canceled back on December 1st because of bad weather. And County Executive Steve Levy says he personally insisted it be rescheduled. The 15-foot Big Duck was built in 1931 as a tribute to Long Island duck farming. The structure is on the National Register of Historic Places and draws thousands of tourists each year. The lighting ceremony tonight will feature the Flanders Fire Department, a middle school choir, and a special guest from the North Pole. A NASA-run facility on the campus of Long Island's Brookhaven National Laboratory has halted plans for research on squirrel monkeys. Newsday says animal welfare activists and school children had opposed blasting the monkeys with radiation. The proposed $1.7 million project was aimed at learning how to how space voyage to Mars might affect the brain. Brookhaven says it was told to remove the research from consideration at the Nassau Space Radiation Laboratory. Well, we had a mostly sunny day today. The high was in the low 30s. Tonight, cloudy skies with a low down into the mid-20s. Tomorrow, a sunny day with a high in the low 30s. Saturday, partly cloudy with a high in the mid-30s. Then on Sunday, a chance of a few snow showers with a high in the upper 30s. Outlook for Monday, a chance of a few snow showers, a high just around freezing. And that's it for NYIT's LI News Tonight. I'm Ken Eckhart. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.